Joe Biden welcoming the Boston Celtics to the White House this afternoon, meaning that as of right now, 8 o'clock in New York City, Joe Biden has said more publicly about the 2024 Boston Celtics championship team than he has about the war and the escalation in Ukraine. Today, again, for the very first time in a war that's gone on for the last 33 months, Russia launched a hypersonic intermediate range ballistic missile at Ukraine. First time, almost three years of the war, just two days after Ukraine launched U.S. made missiles at Russia. Also, for the very first time on Tuesday, Putin stating today, again, for the first time, that the war in Ukraine has, quote, acquired elements of a global character, which in Russian very literally means that the war in Ukraine and the war here has become a regional war. Now has the elements of a global war. Again, global character means world war. And just this morning, Putin stating, quote, I would like to emphasize once again that it was not Russia, but the United States that destroyed the international security system. And by continuing to fight, they are pushing the whole world into global conflict. Again, for a fourth night in a row, I feel like that frog in the boiling pot of water. And when the leader of the largest nuclear power on the planet says the war in Ukraine is turning into a global conflict, I think we should take that seriously. Imagine if Russia gave Canada missiles to fire at the United States. Would we be at war with Canada? Yes. But wouldn't we also be at war with Russia? Think about that. Because that's exactly what Joe Biden is doing. And that's exactly what he just did in Ukraine. Two weeks after the most decisive electoral win for Republicans since the 1980s, and Joe Biden did something that he himself has called an impeachable offense, providing weapons to a nation to attack another nation that hasn't attacked the U.S. first. That, according to Joe Biden, an impeachable offense. Listen. The president has no constitutional authority to take this nation to war against a country of 70 million people unless we're attacked or unless there is proof that we are about to be attacked. And if he does, if he does, I would move to impeach him. Oh, no congressional approval, nothing. Joe Biden just took the future of the planet and rolled the dice. Where's Speaker of the House Mike Johnson? Why hasn't he moved to impeach Joe Biden? Because that's what he just did. Something that Joe Biden himself said was impeachable. He's involving the U.S. in a foreign war. The U.S. has not been attacked, and yet we are attacking Russia with our weapons from Ukraine. Joe Biden should be impeached immediately, and I mean that seriously. Joe Biden is a lame duck president. 59 days left in his term, and he might be the last most lame duck of all time. The definition of lame duck, this is in duck terms, a duck that is weak or falls behind in ability or achievement. Joe Biden to a T. If Joe Biden were a duck, he'd be a lame duck if he were a duck because Joe can't fly anymore. He hasn't been able to fly for a long time, but nobody's clipped his wings. Joe shouldn't be doing anything for the next 59 days except wandering around the White House with slippers on because what's happening right now, and I think this is perfectly clear to the rest of the world, Joe Biden is not making the decisions. If he ever was, Joe Biden is an empty vessel, a front man. But through him, people like Antony Blinken, Lloyd Austin, Jake Sullivan are very literally doing what the media told us Donald Trump would do when he was first elected in 2016. Take a look. In this country, we have begun to overestimate the dangers of impeachment and underestimate the dangers of a deranged president retaining control over a nuclear hyperpower. Very important action taken because Donald Trump is now in charge of our nuclear weapons. The biggest danger of the Trump presidency is that we are always just a Trump whim away from nuclear war. If Congress does not want to go to war, now is the time to start putting restraints on this president. And again, they've been giving him green lights all the way. Okay, so of course, none of that ever happened. The world was at peace when Donald Trump was president. But isn't it interesting that Joe Biden hasn't talked to Vladimir Putin in three years? Don't you think it's a little odd? If you were in charge, let's say you were president, and you were trying to prevent a global war, don't you think you'd pick up the phone and, and maybe try to talk to the other side, work something out? It shouldn't be a crime in this country to try and understand things from both the Ukrainian perspective and the Russian perspective. Because I can tell you the American perspective. I'm an American citizen. 
And I'm not okay with U.S. missiles being fired from Ukraine into Russia. And I hope that the people in Russia hear this right now. I'm not okay with that. And I promise you that many of our fellow American citizens here in this country are not okay with it either. U.S. News and World Report today. Russia says that a new U.S. base in Poland raises the overall nuclear danger. We looked into it. This base in Poland opened eight days ago. Did you know about this? I didn't. What are we doing? And now Ukraine is firing our weapons at Russia. Isolated, none of this means anything. But when you start to piece this stuff together, it's not difficult to see why Russia might be a little bit upset with the United States. Again, Ukraine has got every right to defend itself, but the media here in America have spent the last three years convincing the American people that anybody who questions what's going on in Ukraine or suggesting that maybe there are two sides to this story is somehow pro-Putin, is somehow a Putin stooge or a Putin propagandist, I can assure you, I am none of those things. I am just pointing out what I'm seeing happening right now in Eastern Europe. And I'm doing that thinking about my children, my kids, and what America would look like for them if this does go all the way. And right now, we are very close to all the way. Remember that doomsday clock count when we were all kids? Right now, we are 90 seconds to midnight. More on that in a moment. But we also have a president right now who's just not all there. And this is not an age thing. Joe Biden turned 82 yesterday. Uh, there are plenty of people out there that are 82 that are still with it. But Joe Biden's not on that list. He's not well. And I'm not convinced that this current Joe Biden really cares about the world that he's going to leave behind. When you look at current Trump cabinet nominees, Kennedy, Hegseth, Rubio, Musk, Duffy, Radcliffe, Burgum, Nome, Waltz, they've got a combined 50 children between them, meaning that every single thing they do on behalf of the American people is going to be with those 50 kids in mind, with their futures in mind. And then I think about the people acting on behalf of Joe Biden right now, the names that I've mentioned for four straight days, people no one voted for, and the people that have been the driving force behind the war in Ukraine from day one, Antony Blinken, Jake Sullivan, Lloyd Austin. Two of them don't have any children. Antony Blinken has two children, which matters. When you look at people with kids, people think about the future differently because they have a stake in it. And this is... Look, right now, as I said last night, right now, we are relying as a country, 350 million people in America, on Vladimir Putin to show restraint and hoping, beyond a hope, that just knowing that Donald Trump is going to be taking over at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue in 59 days will be enough to prevent World War III. That doomsday clock has never been this close to midnight. And when it does reach midnight, boom. Hopefully cooler heads prevail. Information. Truth. Is freedom. Is Newsmax. It's real news for real people.